Hello? Can you guys hear me? I think you can hear me. I see my, um, my microphone working in OBS, so I'm just gonna assume that it's working because we have a delay, but uh, we have the Grand Finals of the Winter Championship 2021. It's gonna be between Zerton and Eri. In the best of seven, with Zerton starting with a one score lead. And the first map is going to be, as you can see, on Sheltered Pass. And Zerton is starting with Egypt, and Eri is starting with Persia. Some music going. Let me know in the chat how the audio volume, I uh, like audio levels are, if it's good or bad. <sighs> All right, cool. Nice. Okay. All right, everybody. We've got Eri spawning as the red Persians in the bottom right side, and we have Zerden as the blue Egyptians on the top left of Sheltered Pass in the game one of the grand finals of the Winter Championship 2021. Zerden's opening with the Hunt Storehouse. Eri is opening with the Barracks, so he is going on full aggression. Oh, actually, never mind. Uh, Eri does have two very safe hunts right next to his town center so that's pretty good for him but he is building his barracks with two villagers here so he's going to be having lots of sparbar out very quickly while on the other side zerden is building his barracks with only one villager yes it's one to zero already because um zerden comes from the winner bracket and eri is coming from the uh, losers bracket so he does start with a one score lead that's the reason. Alright, Eri's barracks is up, so there's the first Sparbara coming in for him. Uh, uh, Zertan's gonna be catching the Sparbara just as it gets trained. And Eri's transitioning his villagers to Wood Storehouse. And Zertan's gonna be fully aware of uh, Eri's movements. With the scout, he just keeps it here so we can see. <clears throat> Let's see, over on the other side of the map, Zerden's still not gathering from a storehouse. And that's that's pretty okay because he's using a priestess to empower his town center. Oh, he actually did that so he can get uh, hunting dogs first. Nice, so he's going to be having a lot of food income. One second, let me do this. I meant to do it before the stream started, but... Mm, still not good. Ah, oh, nice. So, some Sparabaras already on the way to Zerden's base, but he's more than ready to defend against that with four spearmen to the three Sparabara of Eri. But Eri is regrouping with his own Sparabara. Yeah, alright. It's so strange to interact with the chat when there's a huge delay like that. But Zerden has 7 Spearmen out already, and Eri has 6. Villager count is 14 for Eri and 13 for Zerden. He still hasn't pulled his Priestess off of his town center though, so he is still training his villagers at full train time, which is 16 for the Egyptians. Oh, but now he's putting a lot of damage on Eri Sparabara. Three of them are already near dead. And he's trying to move them back. But, uh, yeah, I think he's going to lose at least one Sparabara here. Even a second one. And Zerden hasn't lost a unit just yet. Third Sparabara goes down. Two Spearmen going down. But uh, overall, I think Zerden is getting the better end of the deal here. With six Spearmen alive to the five Sparabara of Zerden. I mean, of Eri. Hmm, but I think the extra health of the Sparabara is coming into play now. Yeah, Sparabara do have 
a 50% more health compared to the Egyptian spearmen, so they are a lot tankier, while also being behind in DPS only once. This music sounds lot nice. Yeah, it's the Roman soundtrack, so I figured I'd give you guys a little sneak peek. It's one of the Roman songs. Eerie making his way to the second age. Gathering stone. No stone from Zerton just yet. He is now uh, starting it. Oh, predictions? Yeah, if somebody from the mods could uh, manage the predictions, that would be very nice. With Eerie as red and Zerton as blue, I would be really grateful. Um, let's see. Eerie is still aging up with uh, 19 villagers to the 19 of Zerton, so Zerton did catch up. And that's thanks to the uh, aging up mechanism of the Egyptians who age up by building temples instead of aging up in the town center. So while Eerie's town center is busy researching the second age, uh, Zerton's town center is free to train villagers while this villager here builds the temple of Ra. Eerie has enough resources for a second TC. Let's see where he puts it. Alright, he takes a very offensive uh, position for his town center. So let's see how he decides to play this. Because usually when you expand towards your opponent, it means that you want to keep on the aggression. And that might be exactly what Eerie is looking to do. As he has a reputation for being a very aggressive player. Zerden hit the second age now, and now he has the resources for a second town center, and he's going to build it right next to his first one. So Zerden's TC is in a much more defensive location compared to Eerie's. And Eerie is now building it an archery range on his base as a second production facility, which is a good idea because Zerden is producing Axemen now from his barracks. Oh, this Barbaro is going into his demise. Unless Zerton doesn't pay attention, which he doesn't seem to be doing at the moment. <laughs> Alright, he snipes the Sparabara now, and he's gonna see the town center here. But there's not much he can do about this now. Yeah, the second town center for Eerie is now up. He's producing two villagers at a time. No second TC for Zerton just yet, and also no Priestess of Ra, so that's very important to keep in mind. Egyptian villagers do train slower compared to other uh, town centers, other civilizations rather, if you don't empower your town center. So as you can see here, 18 seconds for these villagers compared to the 15 for Eerie. Second archery range for Eerie and second barracks, so no stable play from him just yet. That's really interesting. Oh, and very nice. He found two boars and he's going to be getting the meat from these two boars. Uh, and uh, let's see, he uh, he has not researched Aten just yet, and I would love to see him do that because he has a lot of injured villagers, I mean units, and Aten allows storehouses to uh, heal nearby units. Oh, I missed this raid here, a bunch of uh, spearmen and a handful of axemen from Zerton coming into the wood line of Eerie, getting a storehouse, but Zerden is losing a lot of units to the defensive force of Eerie. <laughs> However, he did disrupt the wood gathering of Eerie by a lot. All of these villagers walking around are uh, losing a lot of gathering time, which is very precious. Second stable from Zerden, who is only... Oh, actually, he does have two barracks. So two barracks, two stable from Zerden and Eerie with two barracks and two... Archery ranges. Oh, this is really nice by Eerie trying to intercept the forces of Zerden with his own. And oh, now he's get backing off because he sees more units coming in for Zerden. But he does have reinforcements of his own. Oh, these two wolves coming into the aid for Zerden, putting some chip damage on those Persian units. Oh, but now that we're gonna have a sandwich move here from Eerie. Coming in with the rest of his forces on the left side, and Zerden is unaware of this. He he is going to be sandwiched by the army of Eerie. Yeah, that's really nice. Oh, and Zerden is not looking at this battle right now, so he's going to lose a lot of his army here because of the reinforcements from Eerie. And Eerie moved some of his 
front line to defend against these camels as well. So really nice play by Eerie all around. And look at how fast these spearmen kill those camels. Finally, we have some slingers from Zerden coming in to help against those bowmen who are growing in count rapidly with 10 bowmen out already. Oh, some axemen here for Zerden trying to put some pressure again on Eri, who does have A10 research now, so it's going to be more difficult for Zerden to get any meaningful damage, especially if Eri reacts fast. But now Eri is knocking on the front door of Zerden, and Zerden is uh, desperately trying to put down some more production facilities because he's down in population. Uh, 42 villagers to 44, so while he's down... In military count, he is ahead in villagers, so if he manages to somehow survive... Oh, this is good for Zerden, though. He is disrupting the wood gathering of Eerie right now, and he's struggling for wood, as you can see. But this is a, a scary force for Zerden to be dealing with right now. He only has 10 slingers, and Eerie has 15 bowmen out already. But Eerie... I'm not sure if, I, uh, if this is the best position for Eerie to attack into, because he's running into two TC's directly and he's not sniping the priestesses three of which are available here but those Persian spearmen are just wrecking these camels here right now and Zerden is facing a lot of pressure from Eri's army right now yeah Eri's just pushing in into Zerden's base and he's just there's the parade push of the Persian reinforcements coming in non-stop into Zerden's base he's just added a stable but he's not queuing up anything from it right now he's just sending in spearmen and bowmen into Zerden's base with a 30 population lead already for Eerie things are looking dire for Zerden who is forced to evacuate his TC's and his priestesses from empowering but he is being smart and he's reinforcing behind his town centers so that uh, he doesn't send his units to the meat grinder, so to speak. But there are a couple of straggler units for Eerie, yeah. Like, even this this one single spearman is going to kill these villagers if left uh, without any attention. Zerden seems to be finally cleaning this up, but he's completely struggling for food right now. a lot of pressure on oh yeah just just like i said earlier look at this one spearman if zerden doesn't kill this spearman he's gonna kill all of these uh, seven villagers on his own so let's check back on that storehouse in a few minutes and see what's happening 45 villagers to 54 so Iri was two villagers behind now he's nine ahead all right seems like zerden finally dealt with that a uh, spearman but there are even more units coming his way now with uh, four bowmen and three spearmen, and I don't think these villagers are long for this world. Well, maybe. Okay, one villager goes down, but not more. Armory going down for Zerden, and let's see here. Eerie has not put down any armories just yet, but he is mustering a huge force right next to Zerden's base. And he's ahead 27 population. <clears throat> Eerie just sending more and more villagers around the map to get some resources. Oh, these berries are so oversaturated now. Alright, Azerdan finally has a decent sized force to defend or try and defend against Eerie's army. But he's not engaging just yet. Maybe he wants. Master, bless you. Oh, uh, thank you for the follow, the MD man. Welcome to the stream. Eerie is finally gathering all of his forces to prepare for a final attack, it looks like. With a commanding population lead of about 45. Well, actually a little less than that. 140 population in play. And Zerden is really housed right now, so he needs to build more houses. Yeah, there he goes. He is adding more and more houses to make some more units. Some camels going around for e uh, for Zerden trying to do damage. Oh, this is really nice by Eerie. He just went around the map trying to look for anything outside the main base of Zerden 
that he can pick off and he did exactly that but look at the army of Eerie. it's just so much bigger compared to Zerden's oh this is nice counter attacking by Zerden though these camels are trying to distract Eerie for the time being but I'm not sure if Zerden is aware of the size of Eerie's main army just yet he is still behind about 20 population compared to Eerie but he is buying himself some time with these camels so that's really nice oh but here comes the sandwich move again from Eerie all of these extra forces from him trying to completely sandwich the army of Zerden and Zerden's I don't know is he trying to micro slingers onto the bowmen he is flanking with his camels though but I think his population is dropping a lot faster than Eerie's these priestesses are healing a lot though and I think hmm it's really hard to predict actually I think eventually Zerden can clean this up but oh wow he's down 40 population already and let's see Zerden finally got his camels dealt with by Eerie And now Eerie is just trying to kill some houses while he reinforces with more and more units. How did he find that hunt? I guess he was just looking around uh, Eerie's, uh, Zerden's base. But, oh my god, there's another single spearman here as well. Oh, and this is really good for Eerie. He's just sending a single unit here to put on damage on these villagers. And Zerden's at 54 villagers to the 64 of Eerie. So Eerie is once again in a huge villager lead. Alright, finally that Asabar got dealt with. But the thing is, Eerie is already aware. Yeah, and look at this. He saw that Zerden sent uh, a camel to defend against that. So now he's sending some spearmen to raid there instead. So now if Zerden tries to defend this position with camels, uh, his camels are going to die really fast to the Persian spearmen who are... One of the strongest in the game and the only h2 spearman in the game yeah but zern is producing some axemen already so that's going to be good for him in terms of defense and eerie needs to be careful here because he only has one spearman in the front line for his bowman ball and then he has nothing there and slingers alone can deal with bowman just fine all right zern finally dealing with these axemen with the spearmen from uh, Eerie. Yeah, really nice positioning by Eerie all around. Let's see. Now Zerden is trying to reinforce this position with some more camels. Or maybe he wants to send them on a raid. Let's see. Oh, he's just sending this entire group on a raid. But uh, Eerie is already here. So I'm not sure if he can get much done here yet. Uh, Zerden's army is looking not quite as big as Eerie's at the moment. Uh, and Eerie, let's see. Does Eerie have an armory? Oh, there he goes with two armories. So the one saving grace for Zerden right now is that he's ahead three armory upgrades compared to Eerie. So even though he's a little behind in a population, the quality of his units is higher than that of Eerie's. And oh, uh, wow, this group actually made its way here. So Zerden is going to be pressuring Eerie on the other side of the map while Eerie attacks him on his front door. And let's see, I think with uh, with some good positioning, Zerden can hold this with, with ease. Yeah. Zerden sending his units back though because he sees the size of Eerie's army. But to be fair... Zerden is no longer behind in population and he does have access to in combat healing so I think it's looking pretty okay for Zerden so far in this match or at least at this moment in time yeah he's uh, pushing uh, Yuri's army back who is only now upgrading his units with armory upgrades first two kicking in momentarily oh and now Zerden's gonna flank Eerie's army with units of his own. But let's see, Slingers are not attacking the Bowmen, so right now the fight uh, could be going in Eerie's favor. Well, 
Zerden does back off. And Eri still has a bunch of units here. Oh yeah, I missed this raid here. Bunch of Asabaras. I'm not sure if Eri can attack into this army though. Oh no, Eri, look at your army. Let's see. 27 slingers to 40 bowmen from Eri, but the problem is Eri doesn't have much in front of those bowmen. So he needs to put something as a meat shield before he can utilize them to their best ability. Both players are still in the Bronze Age actually. I don't see a Temple of Set from... Zerden and oh finally we have the Silver Age being researched by Eri and he is already thinking of sitting up for the late game with that market over there. So that's really nice and he is only gathering stone with one villager. It's this one. So I wonder if he's going to put down a, a 30C as soon as he hits age 3. And if he wants to do that he needs to gather more stone. Oh that's really nice from Zerden. These camels are being really pesky here. Now Zerden getting pressured by army of Eri, but I'm not sure why he's backing off. I think his army can deal with Eri's army relatively easily. He does have a very beefy front line with 36 axemen. And six priestesses in the back line healing actually. And these camels have not been dealt with. Oh, there's the Silver Age from Zerden. Where did he put this Temple of Set? There it is. And now he's researching Axeman Champion, which is an incredibly good upgrade, giving Axeman area damage, more health, and more raw damage. Oh, all of these little raids from Eerie's. Taking to uh, taking its toll on Zerden's villager count, who is on 59 villagers only compared to the 74 of Eri, and Eri is just making more and more markets, and he's getting Bowman Champion now, so his Bowman are going to be attacking a lot faster when that upgrade is researched. So let's see, Axeman Champion kicking in for Zerden, but Bowman Champion kicking in for uh, Eri as well. Let's see, Eri is lacking his H3 storehouse upgrades though, and Zerden on the other hand, he does have his wood upgrade, but not his farm upgrade. Oh, but this is such a chaotic game, so many things going on at the same time. We have some Asabar raids here, and we have a bunch of Persian units on the left side doing some damage. We have Egyptian camels on this side of the map, but the main fight is here, so let's focus on that. Uh, I think Zerden can take this fight because, like I said, there's not much in the front line for Eri. Yeah, these women have to evacuate this fa this fight. And these uh, Slingers can chase them if they wish, but Zerden is not going to be doing that for now. While on the other ha side of the map, Zerden is getting pressured by all of these little units from Eri. Luckily for him, Eri hasn't found out about this. Yeah, but I would like to point out one thing. Both players are maxed, and Zerden has a significantly lower villager count. So that does mean that his army count is much, much bigger than of Eri's. So if Zerden can take a good engagement and win the fight convincingly, he has a, he's going to have an overwhelming military lead. Oh, we see some rams being trained from Eri with a forward a pair of forward uh, siege workshops where's the 30c for Eri? does he have a 30c oh there it is so he didn't bother making it on the far edge of the map so he's just using his initial town center as a drop-off point for his caravans and that is giving him 62 gold per trip so let's see if that's gonna come into any play during the course of this match Eri is struggling for gold quite a bit. He is uh, having an abundance of wood and food, but for gold, he still needs help. Oh, this is really nice by Zerden. 
sending in some camels to cut off the reinforcements and he actually has camel champion research oh here comes a ram from Erie trying to put pressure on the TC but there's a huge camel flank on these bowmen and I think Erie is going to lose all of his bowmen to the champion camels and the slingers yeah there's no chance for these bowmen even the priestess healing all the chip damage that these bowmen are doing onto the Egyptian units and Zerdan finally pushes Erie back and Eri is behind in population now, and Zerdan catching up on the villager count, so... Oh, and this is a much, much better uh, caravan route for Zerdan compared to Eri here, who is just using this town center as, as his destination. Uh, he's, he's even getting less than 62 gold that I saw. So let's compare that with Zerdan, who is getting 128, so that's almost twice the gold income. For Zerton. So the longer the game goes, the better it's going to be for Zerton in terms of gold income. But Eri is still on the offensive here. He's still trying to push into Eri's army, and this is really nice. He has 11 champion spearmen in position to defend his bowmen from those camels, and he's doing a fantastic job at cutting down this camel count with his spearmen. And on the front line, those Asabaras are tanking for the Axemen, but there's not much left in the back line for Eri. And at the same time, he's trying to push in with some rams, but I'm not sure if he's getting anything done with them just yet. Yeah, Zerdan's gonna push this back. But eventually, Eri managed to win the fight here, and now he's back to max population, where Zerdan is at 140. Immortals, please, says Pharos in the chat. So let's see, no immortals from Eri just yet, no immortal camps, and let's check this armory. Alright, Eri is one upgrade away from being fully upgraded on his armory, but ooh, this is gonna hurt for Zerton. He has no pierce damage upgrades researched, and he has only one armory upgrade for, for I mean one armor upgrade on his units. So Eri's units are much better upgraded now compared to the beginning of this match where he was quite behind. Eri even has some Takabaras in the mix. That's really nice to see. And this ram is just going to take full advantage of the positioning of the Persian army trying to kill the town center and I think he, he can take it down. Yeah, this town center is going down to this ram and Zerdan is trying to put down more production facilities and I think that's exactly what he needs. But I wonder if that's going to be enough. This huge Persian force is pushing into his base and he's killing houses, killing uh, TCs, killing farms with his ram. And Zerdan's forced to pull back a little bit with 86 villagers to the 96 of Eri. Wow, Eri really getting that worker count up. But Zerdan's not giving up just yet. He's at 145 population to the 180 of Eri, trying to make some chariots and camels. Yeah, he has a lot of units in queue. And let's see, this lack of armory upgrade is really hurting him, and there's a GG. Yeah, just the majority of this DPS and those fights came from Slingers and later on from these Chariot Archers, and him having no Pierce damage upgrades. Uh, And um, Eri just uh, had better units during those fights. Like if we look here, uh, here as you can see, Eri lost barely any units, whereas Zerdan almost lost all of his units. Eri getting 13,000 more resources compared to Zerdan. Oh, that is a lot. And about 10 more technologies actually that's a little less but still nicely done by Eerie so he takes this game so now we're on one to one All right, Zerdan picks Savannah as the next map. And they're both going to whisper me their civilizations.
Nice. Here we go, guys. Game number two. Zerden playing once again as his Egyptians. And this time we will have Eerie on Babylonians. Let's see. How very fitting. We have Babylonian music playing on an Egyptian themed map against an Egyptian opponent. So let's see. Zerden opening with a hunt storehouse. Eerie is obviously going for a fast barracks because it's Eerie. And he does have the required wood for a barracks right now. Let's see if it puts down the barracks. Yeah. Okay. So let's see if Eerie is going to. Yeah, he just has enough wood for a second ox cart now. Yeah, he queues up another ox cart. And he's actually going to start gathering food with his new villagers and ox carts as opposed to using these ones. So that's really interesting. I wonder if that's going to uh, stop his uh, villager sustain. Yeah, I think he should do that. Yeah. Oh, that's really nice. Eerie actually gathered enough wood to get hunting dogs as well. So let's see. And yeah, now he's rallying into wood. Okay, that's nice. He is struggling a bit with this food right now. Okay, there he goes. The first villager is now being queued. Oh, and this is... I think this is the other build that Zerden and Striker did before in the tournament. Zerden moved his priestess to his wood storehouse. So I think he's going for a fast H2 town setter build. Whereas Eerie is going for a full-on aggression once again. He already sent two villagers to the gold mine, so he's going to be sustaining spearmint production for the near future, as far as I can see. And Zerden comes in and sees the spearmint of Eerie in production. He actually forgot one spearmint here in his town center. Maybe he's going to send it over now. Let's see. There's the Temple of Ra from Zerden. Now, Eerie is going to be making his way on the other side of the map, and fortunately for him, this is a very long rush distance, and there are some crocodiles in the way, and Zerden Scout is also putting some damage into the Spearman. But the first Spearman is already there. Okay, Eerie did move the Spearman from here. Now he's coming into the Hunt Storehouse for Zerden. And the Temple of Ra just finished for Zerden, and Zerden trying to squeeze in as much gathering time from these villagers as he can, sending them home one by one as they get damaged from Eerie Spearmen. And there's a second Priestess of Ra for Zerden, so Zerden is actually going for a full TC first build, and that is really greedy. Let's see how that works out for him. Eerie now has enough resources to make a ziggurat and go to the Sil uh, Bronze Age. And there he goes with a ziggurat, putting it down with three villagers. Wow. So he really wants to get to that age too. Oh, this spearman is dying to the scout and this one is also really low. But Zerd is forced to evacuate his wood line and he's going to lose his wood storehouse. But I think overall... It's gonna be fine for him. Yeah, he's killing a lot of Eerie's villagers now. I mean, Spearman, sorry. And his second TC is coming up momentarily. And I'm not sure if Eerie did enough damage to justify all of these Spearman losses. He lost a lot of Spearman there. And the villager count is 19 to the 14 of Zerden. But if, if history wants to repeat itself, we will see Zerden skyrocket in villager count very soon. Now Zerden has a second TC up and 
Eerie doesn't even have a second TC started, so this is going to be really good for Zerden very soon, and he does have access to this hunt. So, let's see if um, Zerden goes over there and gathers from there instead of these berries, but that's fine. No economy upgrades for Zerden just yet, and Eerie does have Handsaw being researched and he has hunting dogs researched already. There's a second TC for Eerie in a much less defensive spot compared to Zertons just like last game but let's see 18 villagers to the 22 of Eerie. It's gonna be close I think it's gonna like barely be in Zertons favor in a few minutes. He is producing two villagers at a time still though. But if Eerie gets this TC up, it's going to be in a good location in the late game. Because if he just puts a market here and trades with that town center, I believe he's going to get at least 130 or 140 gold per trip. Hmm. Eerie is sending two groups of villagers to hunt from these gazelles here. And we have an archery range going down for Eerie. So let's see what the armor composition is going to be from Eerie. For Zerden, it's double stable so far. So he's going to be pumping out those camels one after another. There's a second TC from Eerie. 26 villagers to 26. So okay. So that's really nice for, for Eerie. He's only behind in villagers by a handful. Let's see. How many ox guards does he have? Three. But he does have access to gardens soon, and he has a very juicy double hippo hunt next to his town center. Second st stable almost done for Zerden, so he's going to be making those camels fast. And Eerie is making spearmen again with bowmen. And there's a stable for him, so he is going for 1-1-1. Oh, actually two archery ranges, that's really nice. But Zerden, on the other hand, he is just making those camels and nothing else. So that makes me wonder if he wants to muster a force of camels to raid and then go to H3 and make some chariot archers, maybe? It's gonna be interesting and it's gonna be close. Let's wait and find out. All right. Eerie is still making bowmen and spearmen. Now he's adding in some lancers into his army composition. And there's a third stable. Wow, third stable coming down from Eerie. So he will have map control, but it, that does mean that if he doesn't advance to the Silver Age and get some chariots, uh, Eerie's army is going to be stronger in a straight up fight. Because he's going to have a lot of spearmen in the mix. Which are going to be very weak to those. I mean very good against those camels. Which are the only unit that Zerden has available as command. Right now. He is trying to raid now. Maybe he can get this villager. Oh this is this is one lucky villager. Oh my god is he going to survive? Ah, oh, He almost made it home. But not quite. Five spearmen here. I mean, five camels here, but there are some spearmen being rallied in to defend. But Zerden has bigger problems on his hands right now. Oh, he's building a guard towers in his base. That's really interesting. And he is walling off his base. This reminds me kind of of how Egyptian players in Age of Mythology like to build their base surrounding their guard towers with houses and stuff like that. But here's the main force of Eerie trying to put pressure on Zerden and Zerden is using his camels to counter attack let's see how that works out for him because Eerie's knocking on his front door however there are lots of defensive guard towers here three of them already up and I don't know if Eerie can break this defense these camels are putting a lot of pressure on him and he's not responding them to, uh, to them that well only one spearman is not gonna be enough against six camels and back home 
Zerdan is easily cleaning this army up from Eri. Wow, so this has really worked out for Zerdan. Yeah, Eri is in a lot of trouble now. Behind in villagers. Wow, 10 villagers behind. How did this happen? We need to take a look at the villager graph after the game is over. I mean, Eri can win straight up fights, but I don't think Zerdan's gonna give him that chance. There's the Temple of Seth from Zerton, who still only has three stables and nothing else. So I believe that he is going to be adding in some Chariot Archers as soon as he hits the Silver Age. Uh, third Age halfway done for him, and nothing of the sort for Eerie in sight. Eerie has 16 villagers on gold actually, but he is still struggling for gold right now. Let's see though, H3 is almost here for Eri, for Zerdan I mean, then there's the H3 and is he gonna get cha camp uh, uh, champion camels is what I'm trying to say. Oh, this is a nice raiding force by Eri though, he's putting some pressure on Zerdan's uh, units and Zerdan is not moving out because he knows that he cannot take on that engagement straight up just yet, instead he's trying to use his camels who are much more mobile run around the map and take off any reinforcements that they can and camel champion is going to be researched really uh quickly for certain almost halfway done and now he's adding in some chariots finally 30c going down for certain Eri is still not in the silver age and he doesn't seem to have the resources for it either but well, let's see, 50 villagers to the 61, so Zerton's still comfortably in their lead for, um, for worker count. But Eri needs to be careful not to lose too many units to those TCs and towers. Oh, on the other hand, he's losing his villagers. Oh man, so many villagers died to those camels, and he's even more behind. 46 villagers to the 62, so Zerton ahead by more than 16 villagers in this game. Remember that ox carts also count as villagers, so he's actually even more ahead. Wow, look at that. Those sweet, sweet heroic Spartan shields on those shield bearers. Looking really dapper there. You want yours? Play on ranked PvP and get your very own. Chamel Campion. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Third TC has been spotted by Eerie. He's well aware. But I don't know if he can do much about it. Zerdan putting down even more towers. While sending a raiding force of 12 camels. To deal with these little reinforcements. But I think these little uh, uh, numbers of spearmen is not going to be good enough against these camels. If he does have a few spearmen in position to defend. And now he's trying to attack the main base of Zerdan. But... Zerton already has 12 chariot archers and on the field. But let's see, this one shield bearer is tanking a lot of fierce damage from these chariot archers. And Eerie is trying to even the odds here, but he is still not an age 3, and that's a huge technology advantage for Zerton, who is now fighting directly. Oh, and this priestess almost lost her way and went to the other side before starting to heal her friendly units. And Eerie is just trying to uh, put on the aggression on Zerdan, but I'm not sure if he can do that. There are f 11 chariot archers out for Zerdan, worth 33 pop. But the Eerie does have a few slingers here, but I'm not sure if 6 slingers are going to be enough to defend against 12... Chariot Archers, yeah, Zerdan is really sitting here comfortably killing all the reinforcements from Eri with his uh, camels. Look at how good they are. Like, everything that's passing by here gets countered by these camels. Whether, whether it's the ranged unit or a cav unit, it's all dealt with from these camels. And Eri's just desperately trying to 
kill some villagers, but he's so far behind. He is about 30 villagers behind in this game. And it's looking very grim for him right now. He's at half the score, and there's the GG from Eerie. He taps out. I really want to see that villager graph. Yeah, look at this. Eerie not training villagers for... I don't know, that's like uh, two minutes, two full minutes. That's a lot of villagers lost. And yeah, he, he once he lost the lead here, he never got it back. He did have uh, the population lead in military for a long time, but it didn't work out for him too well. Zerden out gathering Eerie this time by 4,000, out taking him too. Wow, Eerie actually only had a few technologies researched, that's really interesting. And let's see, he didn't have any gardens either. Jordan's asking for a two minute break, and that's fair. gonna get some water I'll be right back guys oh actually you know what I should switch to this thing here
All right. I'm back, and this time we're going to have Ghost Lake, and it's going to be a Kelt Mirror, guys. Alright. Oh, let's switch these before it gets all confusing. Give me a second, guys. Here we go. Alright, we have Zerden as the blue Celts on the right side, and we have Eerie as the red Celts on the left side of Ghost Lake. Zerden already found some sheep on the lake. He's gonna be sending them home. Wow, he found three sheep already and another three just now. And Eerie is not doing that yet, so he's gonna be... In a sheep disadvantage in this game, as far as I can tell. Okay, he does find three of the sheep. So it's three to three now. But now Zerden is sending those sheep home. So let's see if he can steal them. Oh no. Eerie has his sheep stolen now. Oh no, Eerie. Look at your sheep, man. Oh, he just gives up on the sheep. All right. So Zerden is having access to... Nine sheep so far. And that's going to be really nice for him in case he loses his hunts. Because sheep each hold 100 food. So that's around 900 food available to Zerden in a very safe spot. Because he can just move them next to his town center. Okay, only three... Only, I mean, only nine... Sheep were found in this game so far. Only three groups. And let's see. Zerden researching hunting dogs, actually. And Eerie doesn't have it just yet. He hasn't queued it up either. He's actually electing to build a, a house before that. There's a house for Zerden. Look at all of those sheep. With the epic music. Alright, enough with the sheep. Yuri's trying to be on the offensive here once again. Trying to circle around Zerden's base. I'm not sure if he can get much done here, though. Oh, he is gonna find this just in the nick of time, actually. That's really nice. I think he can snipe this villager and the Nether Storehouse, yeah. There he goes. So one villager down for Zerden, and that Storehouse just got denied. Oh, and this is really nice. Uh, Eerie really on the spot with his spearmen running away just before the uh, spearmen of Zerden reach him. Yeah, and Zerden doesn't want to go in. On the other hand, Eerie is in the wood line of Zerden. He's going to kill another villager with body blocking him. Oh my god, he's going to body block them. another villager here, I think. Alright, he only gets one. Fourth house from Eerie and h2 and he's starting to gather a stone as well so this is really good for for eerie oh this is a stone storehouse so zerden's also thinking of making a second town center soon and he also started going to the bronze age here's it well it was going to be a good engagement for eerie but he move commanded Spearmen. 13 spearmen to 8 though. So 
Eerie successfully baited Zertan into overproducing Spearman. Very much so, in fact. Now Eerie is in the second age and he's producing Long Swordsman and he's even putting down a second barracks before a before a TC. Wait up. He's he's not even getting enough stone for a fast TC, actually, it looks like. Yeah, he only has two villagers on stone without a storehouse even. Seventeen villagers to nineteen. Oh, but Eerie is being aggressive here. However, he is going to be counter raided very, very soon with th fourteen even fourteen spearmen, and he doesn't have much back home to defend. He is trying to circle around Zerden's base with eleven spearmen of his own and one long swordsman mixed in. Oh, and he's going to come back for the hunt store us, and that's a good choice for him. But he's going to be raided very soon. And if he doesn't look at his base... Oh, that's a really good reaction time from Eerie. I don't think Zerden's going to kill anything here. Yeah, that's really good from Zerden. From Eerie, I mean. And Zerden's now making his way into the wood line of Eerie. Who just denied Zerden his second hunt once again. And there's a second town center from Eerie. From Zerden, I mean. And it's halfway done already, and Eerie comes out, comes in and finds out about this, and let's see if it can deny this TC. Oh my god, is he gonna just right-click this TC? Can he do it? Oh my god, the TC is going down so fast, he's just right-clicking the TC to death, and he can get the TC down, wow! Insane, insane advantage for Eerie now, he denied the town center, and it was almost done, even. So Zerton losing a lot of resources there. So even though Zerton's TC was started quicker, Eerie is now ahead in every sense. 21 villagers to 25. He's going to have enough stone for a second TC. And his army count is no nothing short of Zerton's. Wow. Really nice job by Eerie. And Zerton, I think he, he is going to try and remake his town center. Yeah, he is. But he's also putting down two more barracks. So this sends me uh, mixed messages about what his game plan is going to be. There's a second TC from Eerie, and this is really interesting. Both of these players put their TC in such defensive spots, even like almost using it as a building wall. Zertan did the same. I wonder if this is the meta in CVC right now. And now the Zerden is going to do the same, maybe. Oh, well, this is so crazy. Zerden is going to deny the e second TC of Eerie just like he denied his. Oh, wow. This is crazy. This is super crazy. But I think I think Eerie lost less resources there compared to Zerden. And all of the units of Zerden are so low. And again, Eerie is in the base of Zerden trying to deny the second TC. But can he deny it again this time? Let's find out. Eerie is busy looking at his own base trying to kill, clean up uh, Zerden's army. Yeah, this time he's not going to be able to deny the TC, but he's killing a lot of villagers. 22 villagers to the 27. And Zerden just barely got that TC up. But on the other hand, Eerie's TC is denied. So I'm curious. I have no idea where this game is going now. Eerie's TC got denied, Zerden's TC got denied, and his TC got denied again almost. Wow, 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 wow. Crazy game so far. <clears throat> okay. So. Let's see what we've going on in this match. Second TC again from Eerie, and unfortunately for Zerden, he doesn't have enough units nearby to be able to deny it this time around. Oh, and look at this. Panic. Four barracks from Eerie, who really wants to ramp up his production as soon as he has a second TC built. With uh, 29 villagers to 31. So, let's see. This town center is going to be up momentarily, so I don't think Eerie is going to lose that villager lead. But... He had a massive villager lead right before that TC got sniped, and now he's just going to be barely um, making things even. 
Zern getting all of his storehouse upgrades one after another, and Eerie on the other hand, he actually does have them already, with the exception of hunting dogs. And Zerton still gathering from those sheep, so you can see he's getting a lot of value from that hunting dogs. And actually, these berries are his own, oh, never mind, he does have access to this hunt still. I think uh, Eerie is still in an advantage in this game, but it's not by much. 12 long swordsmen to 12, is it 12? 14. So I don't think Eerie can take this fight. Yeah, he needs to run away. He is gonna run away, yeah. And there's, an, there's a sacred grove coming down from Zerton. And on the other hand, oh, we have a sacred grove down for Eerie as well. So both players playing very similarly, with the exception of Eerie being on the offensive and Zerden being on the defensive, which is to be expected from these players. Eerie, a very aggressive player all over the map. Zerden, the strong defensive macro player. So it's going to be interesting to see how these two playstyles clash together. With 41 villagers to 43, alright. 26 long swordsmen for. Zerden there, 22 for Eerie, and soon Zerden will have druids here. So, oh, never mind. Eerie actually brings in his own druids into the fight. I'm not sure who's gonna win this, but I do know that Zerden has more long swordsmen. But Eerie seems to be getting a better position here, although he decides to abandon this fight, and I don't blame him because he has so many injured long swords, man. He and he lost his druid there. So that was a big win for Zerton right there. However, we do have some more druids coming in for Eerie. We're sitting at 49 villagers compared to the 47 of Zerton's, so he is still keeping that two villager lead that he had. In this match. A raiding force from Zerden being dispatched on the right side. And this is really good for Eerie. He's just keeping in, keeping tabs on every potential resource spot from Zerden. And let's see. Oh, this is really good for Zerden. So Zerden sees this with his watch post. So this is why he's sending his longswordsmen. to raid these villagers but let's see Eerie has five barracks here and we have six long swordsmen here so if Eerie decides to defend against that raid it's gonna take him a very short time to be able to defend this but he just has so low so many low long swordsmen in his army while Zerton's army is fully healed so this is the problem with what Eerie is doing he's just moving around with his army and that means that the druids cannot heal the long swordsmen. Oh, look at this. These six long swordsmen just denying that hunt storehouse. That uh, berry storehouse from Eerie. Let's see. Armory it down for Zerden. Let's see if Eerie has an armory. Yeah, he does. Okay, Eerie does have a, one upgrade advantage right now. 52 long swordsmen to 41, so. Let's see if that one upgrade lead can do anything for Eerie right now, and I think it will. Eerie getting a pretty good position here, and his druids are still healing. But his long swordsman did start out as very injured. Yeah, look at this. This is exactly what I was afraid of. Zerden had fully healed units, while Eerie, Eerie's units were all like this. All almost dead. And because he was running around with them... The druids never got a chance to heal. Thank you for the follow, Zan2622. Welcome to the stream. And let's see, 58 villagers for Zerden to 58 for Eerie. So Zerden even things out and the villager count as well. And now he is in a much better spot compared to Eerie with a commanding lead of 30 extra population over Eerie. And he's sending in a few more long swordsmen to raid some more but Eerie is no longer there so let's see if we can find another weak spot yeah Eerie just lost so many long swordsmen despite having an upgrade lead and that was only because his units were low like all the upgrades in the world will not help you if you don't have the health to work with it 
Eerie trying to get some more map vision. Oh no, I don't think Eerie can take this fight. And Eerie's not looking in his army. Oh. Oh, can he get away? Maybe he can. Yeah, okay. But this is a scary force from Zerden. And we have 36, oh my god, 36 long swordsmen to 63. So even though this army doesn't look too much smaller than this one, it actually is. And Zerden evened up the armory upgrade, so Eerie no longer has an upgrade advantage either in this match. He just needs to buy time. It's the only thing I can think of. I'm not sure how else Zerden, uh, Eerie can come back. Zerden even adding... A bard hall to his upgrades, so he's gonna get brewing, which increases his infantry's health by 5%, and that's gonna be even more helpful. Oh my god, this is gonna be a huge fight, and perhaps even the final fight of this match. Zerden going to the Silver Age while attacking Eerie, and he's also getting Furor Celtica, so his long swordsmen are gonna be better than Eerie's in every possible way. I'm not sure about these engagements though. These are all melee units, and as long as you're fighting with melee units, the only thing that counts is the surface area. Or units. Oh, but he doesn't want to bleed out all of these longswordsmen to the army of Zerden. Eerie slowly starting to catch up in population, though. Let's see. 70 villagers to 72, so he lost the villager lead that he had. And now Zerden's gonna hit the Silver Age, and I expect the first thing we to see on this queue is Long Swordsman Champion. Let's see if he does that. Long Swordsman Champion and... Yeah, there it is. And also Gift of... Um, Sequana. Which is also another incredibly important upgrade. For Druids and for Celts in general. 30 C from Zerden right there. And this Spearman is still here actually. Very nice for Eerie. And let's see... This scout came here to build a watch post and get some map vision, and now uh, Zerden is aware of this hunt, uh, of this wood storehouse. But this is a problem for Eerie. I wanted to point this out. He's trying to move out on the map with his army, but he has druids mixed in, so that means that oh, Eerie absolutely cannot take this fight. Behind in numbers and hugely behind in upgrades. I think he needs to even consider sacking some of his druids to let go of the army because these druids are slowing him down his entire army yeah these druids i think they're not long for this world e uh, is gonna lose a lot of them here but he's hitting the silver age now zerden on the other hand he's getting call of the bull first with some for some more health on his long swordsman then he's gonna get head hunting and call of the stag so let's see 72 villagers still to 79 Zerden maxed out at 180 population. Where's the 30C? There's the 30C for Eerie. Zerden's now pushing in into Zer Eerie's base. 66 long swordsmen out from Eerie. He he is getting long swordsman champion momentarily. Oh, and look at this! Zerden even getting call to arms. On his villagers, so if he gets attacked, that's actually not a bad upgrade in CVC in particular. Oh, I don't know about this. Zerden can get sandwiched here. And remember, it's melee units, so only the surface area counts. And wow, this barracks actually survived at 180, 111 health. Alright, we have a fight here, but these units in the back line don't matter. Except the fact that Eerie is behind in Bard Hall text. He doesn't have a Bard Hall. So his Long Swordsmen are slightly weaker. As we can see, 221 HP to the 232 of Zerdens. But as long as he gets a good position, he can win this. Godella BR, thank you for the subscription. And let's see, 75 Long Swordsmen for Eerie, for Zerden, and 51 for Zerden. But I think overall, Eerie can take this fight. Maybe. 
31 to... Oh no, Zerden is winning this fight so hard actually. Oh my god, the upgrade advantage and the numbers advantage just too much for Eri to deal with. Zerden even getting call of the stag now. Ahura Master, bless you. Molzoka, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. And Zerden's just streaming across the map now with Long Swordsman. Yeah, this is looking really rough, rough for uh, Eri with 70 villagers to 91 of Zerden's. Zerden's even getting headhunting now. Oh wow, look at this. Eerie's trying to kill that wall with his villager. That's a very brave villager. But Zerd is not all over the map. He's even sending some long swordsmen here to uh, put some pressure on Eerie. And he's 80 population ahead at the moment. And things are looking quite good for Zerden here. Stay max, just getting upgraded one after another. GG gets called by Eerie, who puts Zerden on match point. Wow. Zerden only needs to uh, win one more game to win this series. Twenty six ticks to thirteen. Yeah, I think that also means that Eerie didn't get storehouse ticks either. Yeah, he had a lot of farms. 24 farms, even more. Ton of farms, but no upgrades. Behind in Bard Hall ticks. And behind on Armory ticks. Oh, he actually did get a Bard Hall, but he didn't get to research anything. Oh, he did get one upgrade, yeah. Alright. Well done. Alright, the next map is going to be Oasis as chosen by Eerie. upon you long live celeste oh we just got a 50 dollar donation from Servi momia long live celeste thank you so much can we get some hearts in the chat for Servi momia please guys
All right. <clears throat> it looks like I have to switch the order of the scores again. So give me a second, guys. So, we have Zerden as the Blue Norse spawning on the left side, and we have Eerie as the Red Celts on the right side of Oasis. Eerie picked this map, and he is picking Celts, so I'm expecting a huge pyramid rush from him right out of the gate. There we have it. Below 40 seconds with his barracks. And Zerden, on the other hand, he's still gathering some wood. Norse do start with lower wood compared to most other civilizations. And there's the barracks from um, from Zerton. You know what? Let's switch back to some more Roman music. Nice. So Zerton starting that barracks with two villagers and... His melee scout, so he really wants to get that barracks out as soon as he can. And Eerie favoring the aggression incredibly, uh, incredibly so, even foregoing villager production in favor of making more spearmen. So let's see. Zerton is aware of this spearman making his way on the other side of the map. And before Eerie gets here, Zerton is already in position with the Spearman of his own. And Eerie is just making one Spearman after another. Yeah, now Eerie is trying to maybe harass Zerton's units a little bit with a scout, but I don't think Zerton is going to fall for that trap. Eerie with seven villagers on the hunts. He also has another hunt available to him if he wishes to pick from it. Now, Zerden does have four spearmen in position already, and Eerie is not stopping with the spearmen production, making one spearman after another. Hmm, where did Zerden's wood go? Okay, there's the longhouse. So, longhouses are an improved building. For the Norse, it's an improved version of the regular house you see on other civilizations. So it is a bigger, more expensive house that takes longer to build. But it does increase your population count by 10 instead of the regular 5. And your villagers can also garrison inside those longhouses should you need some protection for them. Eri is still making some spearmen. Look at that. He's just non stop making spearmen with seven out here already. But Zerden is aware of the position of those spearmen, so he's moving his forces to defend. But little does he know that Eri is also present on this side of the map with a bunch of spearmen. But Zerden does have some spearmen in position already. 17 villagers to 16. And now Zerd is aging up, and this is an alert for Zerd for Eerie to stop Spearman production. Because as soon as Zerd hits age 2, he will have access to Throwing Axemen. And Throwing Axemen counter infantry pretty hard. And this is also really nice for, uh, for Zerd. He's not using his uh, villagers to make a second... Uh, production facility instead he's using his infantry and he hits the second age oh but he does have a problem and it's that he doesn't have too much gold available to him he can queue up one throwing axeman now but he needs to put more villagers on gold if he wants to continue production of those throwing axemen let's see 10 spearmen to the 12 of Eerie and the first throwing axeman is out from from Zerden. Oh wow. 
The summer hammer, summer axe looks pretty cool on those throwing axemen. And Zerden is in the second age and Eerie isn't. But Eerie is aware of this fact. And so he is going to try and look around Zerden's base to see weak points that he can do damage from. I just noticed that these need fixing the edges here. I will do that after the stream. So, third barracks down from Zerden. No stone from either player just yet. They're just going on the aggressive. But, uh... Eerie does have the pawn to his control at this moment. And he's queuing up a fishing boat from there. Let's see. Four throwing axemen out for Zerden already. Oh, and Zerden's trying to build a dock of his own in the pond, but I don't know if Eerie can... If he is gonna let him do that, Zerden is aware of uh, Eerie's dock, and there's a swan ship on the way for Eerie. So even if Eerie cannot win the fight on land just yet, that swan ship is gonna turn the tide of battle tremendously in Eerie's favor. There's the swan ship. And now Eerie can easily take control of this pond. Yeah, that one ship does so much damage. 60 DPS with one area. More longhouses going down for Zerden. And Zerden is gathering some stone now, as is Eerie. Oh, this is going to be good for Zerden if he catches these villagers, but does he? Oh no, he barely ba passes by. <sighs> okay. Zerden is going to have his base attacked by Eerie, but he's going to do a counter harassment of his own. And this force is not a small one, so Eerie is going to have to uh, be careful here because I don't know if he can just send in a bunch of longswordsmen to defend against 19 units. Yeah, there is Zerden in the base of Eerie, and Eerie immediately evacuates his wood line because he knows he can't hold this. And now he's trying to hold, uh, pull back some units to defend while doing counter harassment of his own. Yeah, he's just rallying in his base right now, and he already knows that he's going to lose a lot of houses, so he just <clears throat> remakes them here. Oh... This is a good spot for Zerden to engage from, but I'm not sure if it's worth it. This is a pretty funny situation. These long swordsmen can't really get in there and kill those throwing axemen, but they do so much damage to them anyway. But on the other hand, Zerden is getting attacked in his base, and he also doesn't have anything to defend. Oh, Eerie is gonna. Oh, you know why? Because Eerie just killed those longhouses. And Zerden is housed, and he's gonna get his longhouse denied again. Only six throwing axemen here to defend. And there's a second TC spotted by... Eerie. There's so many units everywhere on this map, and I think this is exactly how this matchup should be played. Lots of aggression from both sides. And even the map theme is fitting. 35 villagers to 37. Eerie doesn't have a second TC up yet, he just started one, there it is, but he also has some fishing boats on the pond, and I think Eerie is just abandoning this wood line for the moment. Yeah, nice, there's an outpost from Zerden being built, Eerie doesn't, isn't gonna spot it I think, but that's gonna give Zerden some nice map vision and of course 
access to war dogs, which are a unique unit to the Norse. Oh, and again, Eri is gonna deny this longhouse for Zerdan, and I think Zerdan must be very frustrated at this point, constantly getting housed by those Kelt units. But on the other hand, he's killing Eri's houses, so all's fair. But now I think Eri can take this fight. He has 16 longswordsmen to the 13. I mean, sorry, 15 longswordsmen to the 16 throwing axemen of Zerdan. But there's so much going on in this match. It's hard for me to look. Uh, as an observer, I can't imagine how it must be to play it as a player. Oh my god, Zerton again! <laughs> oh, this is so annoying. Every time Zerton gets attacked, he just crawls up into the spot. And this time it's better for him. Because last time he had some spearmen in there too that couldn't attack. But now it's all long uh, throwing axemen. And... Uh, It's just giving a full value. Let's see, 48 villagers to 45, so Eerie's slowly falling behind in the villager count. But I think he's still ahead in this game by almost every aspect. He's gathering from fish here, as opposed to Zerton being forced to even transition into some farms, because he cannot take this. This is very risky to take. And he's all out of his uh, in-based resources. Zerden, I mean, Eerie trying to expand on the right side, get some gold from there. And let's see. Eerie adding in some druids. So that's good. But we have 35 throwing axemen out for Zerden already. And I think Eerie can... Cannot really stay here and do anything. Maybe he just wants to take one shot of these villagers then leave. No, but he's just passing. And that's good because I don't think he could take that fight. Oh, again, Eerie is here with his longswordsman killing one house after another. And he actually killed that outpost here. So that means that Zerton will no longer have war dogs available. But this is scary. For Zerton, I don't know if he can take this fight. Oh, he's just focusing down the swan ship, but little does he know that there's a longswordsman flank coming in. 40 longswordsmen here, and only 29 rowing axemen left in his Norse army. And this is scary for Zerton. This is very scary because you cannot let those longswordsmen get on top of your units. And Eri is doing exactly that, even queuing up another swan ship, even a third one. Wow. Alright, maybe it's time for Zerton to for Eerie to back off. Yeah, he does that. But he is about 30 population ahead and only two villagers behind. Now he's going to run circles around the map again. We have some raiders out now for Zerton making some... Uh, I mean, going out on the map trying to do some counter damage maybe. But Eerie immediately spots those raiders and let's see what he does against that. He is going to the Silver Age now and he's putting down three archery ranges. So... He's well prepared for that bowman transition. And let's see, Zerdan. He's putting down his armory, but no third age from him just yet. Oh wow, this is an absolutely devastating move from Eerie, killing so many villagers. 59 villagers to 63 now. But on the other hand, Zerdan is sending some raiders in Eerie's base. And they are going to kill some villagers of their own. And I think Eerie should consider making some spearmen just to defend against these raiders. Because raiders are really pop efficient unit and it's quite difficult to defend against them. Without spearmen. Oh and this is exactly why Zerdan wasn't really eager to move out and made so those farms because as soon as he moves out Eerie is gonna know and he's gonna deny it with his swan ships once again Eerie is on the other side of the map and Zert's base he's gonna kill this longhouse again and maybe he's even gonna get this um armory and he's in h3 now and Zert is nowhere close to h3 but he does have a lot of throwing axemen made yeah, he doesn't want to take this fight. And the, once again, he does have a few druids who are slowing this army down. Now, as soon as that druid died, see? 
As soon as that druid died, these throwing axemen can no longer catch up to those. Uh, I mean, these long swordsmen cannot. Oh, I'm trying to say these throwing axemen cannot catch up to these long swordsmen anymore. But well, here comes the reinforcements from Eerie, who now has a lot of bowmen mixed in. Eight bowmen already here, and he's making three at a time. So, lots of pierce damage available to Eerie. Let's see. Raiders out on the map trying to do some damage. Wow, this villager is ambitious. Okay. Zerden trying to put down some defensive guard towers in hopes to be able to hold this position. And he probably can. Let's see. 74 villagers to 71. So Zerden's still okay on villager count. He is not in the second... He's still in the second age though. So he needs to think about aging up as soon as he can. He does have the resources to be able to afford it now. And there's a third uh, town center from Erie. Now I wonder where he is going to be getting his gold from. Because he's in such a commanding lead in this game, I think <clears throat> he can comfortably just take all of these gold mines around the lake with the gold mine building and just not care about making a market line if he thinks he can close this game out. But those constant raids on the uh, longhouses are really putting the hurt on certain he's constantly housed eerie once again raiding and certain also raiding both players trying to put pressure on their opponent but these raiders are so low it's going to be difficult for certain to keep them alive on the other hand this army from Eerie is going to be taking a lot of villager kills here before Zerden is able to respond. And this is exactly what Eerie needs to do. Because it's hard to engage into a big throwing axeman ball like that. But the one weakness that it has is that it's fairly immobile with 6 speed against the 7 speed of the Celtic army. But as you can see, as soon as it arrives, it does a lot of damage, but that was a perfect move from Eerie who distracted Zerden to move his main army away from the fight so he can come in and snipe this town center. And I don't think Eerie has any opposition when he's trying to destroy this town center. His units are still alive here actually. Wow, Zerden pulled back with his main army and he's losing on both sides. He's losing his TC here and he cannot defend against this. Oh my god, three long swordsmen are still alive here. And Zerden has an armory and he's getting upgrades now. While Zerden's armory is barely doing anything. Only one upgrade researched for him so far. But he's trying to defend. He's trying to kite. With uh, 57 villagers to the 72 to the 82 of Eerie. Wow, what happened there? Eerie killed a lot of villagers. Wow, that was insane by Eerie. Such a nice move to distract Zerden. Eerie with a commanding lead in this game. Zerden trying to research uh, throwing axe on champion. And that's going to be really nice against all of these upgrades that Eerie is getting. But I don't think he has the numbers here. He still does have 35 uh, throwing axemen out. But there are 34 bowmen in the mix from Eerie. And druids there to support him. And he's also get getting gift of Sekwana. Which is going to be researched momentarily. And that's the hard counter to throwing axemen. It's healing. Because throwing axemen, the way they do their damage is that they do lots of slow increments of damage. So they just stack up ch chip damage on your army. And that's exactly what druids are good against. They heal back up that damage. And there's the GG from Zerton. Well played by Eerie. Fantastically done. Killing so many villagers, I'm like... Yeah, look at this. About 30 villagers dead in a matter of 2 minutes.
Yuri is asking for a two three minute break. All right, next map, Mountain Crossing. <laughs> Zerden's Parisian city name has been renamed to Shield Walls Bora Bora. He's trying to meme me. Lovely. Alright. 
So we have Zerden spawning as the blue Persians on the left side, and we have Eri as the red Greeks on the right side of Mountain Crossing. This is going to be an interesting match for sure. Let's see. I think both players have one hunt each, so that's fine. Oh wow, Eri has such a backdoorable pond with three entrances to it, whereas Zerden only has two. So better spawn for sure there for Zerden. But let's see. Eri putting down his barracks with two villagers. I think he just likes doing that regardless of civilization. It's what I've seen him do the majority of these games. Oh, there we go with the predictions. Thank you. And let's see. Barracks down. I mean, barracks ready is what I'm trying to say for Zerden. And... It's ready for Eerie as well. Let's see how this goes. First Spearman coming out for Eerie. And Zerton's also making Sparbar of his own. Neither player has went for the dock. So that's interesting. Both players comfortably sitting on land, making no moves for the water. And let's see, this time we have the pond spawning at the top side of the map, so that's not something that happens all the time. And let's see, Eerie's now rallying to the berries. Yeah, both players have only one hunt on this pawn. Hmm. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Eerie has one, two... Alright, alright. So they're, they're equal on gold. I was a little worried there. Oh, he really, really wants that house done before he gets housed. Okay. Zerden moving out with his Sparabara. What is this villager doing here? But six spearmen out from uh, Eri already to defend. Seven Sparabara to six spearmen. I'm not sure if Eri should be taking this fight, but he is doing that anyway. And he's also gathering gold with his villager here. So. He plans on keeping that uh, uh, that Spearman production. And Zerden's just trying to move around Eerie's base and do whatever damage that he can. But Eerie's doing a fairly good job at defending it so far. No losses just yet. Five Spar Bar here and I don't know. Uh, let's see. Is somebody lagging? Let me check something. It's not me. Okay, just making sure. Alright. Four spar bar left here, but Eerie has so many spearmen to defend. Yeah. It's lagging. He is asking for a pause. Oh, nice. Zerden's actually going on the water, and Eerie is as well. Alright, we'll back.
All right, six bar bar here for Yiri for Zerden, but eight spearmen out for Yiri to defend. And these bar bar are so low, they're almost dead. And let's see, no eight tenth just yet for Yiri for Zerden. I mean, I keep mixing these guys' names up for some reason. Should focus harder. All right, Yiri has his duck built. Oh, another three. Uh, Sparbara hiding on this side for Zerden, trying to be really annoying with this Sparbara. But Eerie's gonna see that. Oh, this is a really nice move by Zerden, trying to distract Eerie away from those Sparbara, and he successfully did so. Alright. But Eerie manages to fend off these Sparabara successfully. Oh, and this is really nice by Zern. He's trying to get all the advantages that he can in this game. Let's see if I resign. If it makes anything better. Uh, Zern just running around everywhere with this bar bar, but he's not getting anything done. Yeah, Zern being pushed back on all sides. But in Zern's defense, he does have two docks up. Oh, he actually doesn't have anything queued up in this dock because he's housed. He's going to be making a lot of houses, I hope. Yeah, there's another house for him, but he's so housed. I mean, <laughs> he has so much resources in the bank. Sorry, guys, I'm doing a really bad job at casting this time. And this is really interesting. Zerden just trying to run around with these uh, spar bar everywhere all the time, hoping that he somehow manages to find somewhere to attack with the Sparabara without Eri being there to retaliate, but unfortunately for certain, Eri has been there every single time. And let's see, actually I don't think I can check yet. Since I resigned, I can't check players' visions anymore. So I don't know if Eri knows about that dog, but he will soon if he doesn't know. Eri has reached the second age now and he does have the stone for uh, second TC, but not the wood for it. He is. Oh wow! Look at this. Zerden trying to backdoor Eerie's pawn, but unfortunately, these fishing boats are completely aware of that. Second TC almost up for Zerden. Eerie is so far away. From building a second TC though. Now he's queuing up some Hippaspis. Yeah, it's one of the things that is a side effect of all of those spar bar harasses. Eerie's wood gathering has been disrupted so much that he's lacking that villager uh, that wood count. 29 villagers to 26, but Zerden's producing so many units. Like he's ma he's basically on four TCs now. But He's throwing away so many Spara bars here, like constantly. So he needs to be careful of a timing attack because one of the weaknesses of Persia in early age 2 is that unlike some other sieves, their barracks does not produce an anti-infantry unit like the Paspis or long swordsman or i don't know like axeman throwing axeman or soon enough legionaries so you have to be careful if if you're forced your opponent to make a lot of barracks units in age of two and you don't have an archer range to defend you might be in a lot of trouble but yeah this oh zerd again zerd has been constantly trying to ninja eerie one way or another in this match with a sneaky dock, sneaky Sparabara, but luckily for Eerie, he has been able to uh, counter every single one of Zerden's ruses. 
Now making two archery ranges of his own. No stable in sight from him just yet. Whereas Zerden has two archery ranges, a stable and a barracks. And he's still making some Sparabara. And Eri is on Zerden's base with only melee units. So if he wants to engage, he needs to make up his mind. You cannot deal with ranged units with only melee units and this low counts when there's a front line in front of the back line. <laughs> what a sentence I just said. The front line in the front of the back line. But anyway, Eri is pushed back uh, and this retreat is gonna be pretty costly for him I feel like if Zerden decides to give chase. Wow, he's even adding a third arm, uh, archer range. He's gonna be making a lot of bowmen then it looks like. Whereas Eri has in two barracks and two archer ranges. And he's constantly retreating. Okay, Zerden finally gives up. He doesn't want to chase anymore. And let's see, 47 villagers to 46. So Eri still... Not behind on workers, but this pond has been successfully claimed by Zerden and he's just getting all the fish from it for free. Here he's starting to wall off here. Zerden trying to get some map vision here. I expect him to know about this suck by now. Oh, and this is not a force that Eerie wants to engage. Oh, Eerie, look at your army. Okay, he does look at an appropriate time. We have 51 villagers to 55, but this push is going to be difficult for Eerie to hold. If he doesn't bring back his main army, yeah, he is doing that now. Let's see, 19 bowmen to 18 Toxodes, 20 bowmen now, 5 Asabaras, 15 spearmen, 21 Sparabaras, and 10 Hippaspis. So, it really comes down to whose meat line goes down faster, because the, the back line for both players is roughly the same size. Oh, but this is good for Zerden, the way he is attacking this army. His bowmen are getting free pot shots on those Tuxodis, but this is a big engagement now. Let's see, 21 Tuxodis to 23 bowmen, but Eri does have the defender's advantage, and it's really hard to push into a Greek place like that. But Eri... Uh, I mean, Zerden does have some frontline left alive still, but it's falling down rapidly. With no uh, Asabara left alive, only Sparabara left here to tank a bit, but even so, there's only a handful of them left alive, so Eri just killed the entire front line of Zerden without losing too much of his own, but uh, Zerden's getting ahead in population as time goes by, with 67 villagers to 56. Wow, how did he get an 11 villager lead? That is incredible. And let's see, Zern does have an armory up, and so does Eri. Both of them are getting pierce damage upgrade first. That is an excellent choice. Zern also already has the pierce armor upgrade in Q, which is, of course, one of the best things you can get against Greeks. And now Eri's trying to move out, but he's not looking at his army. Oh, disastrous! Disastrous move out by Eri, and he's losing all of his front line to those Toxori, to those bowmen of Zern. Oh, that was. That was devastating for Eri, who is only reduced to 8 spearmen in, in his front line and nothing else. And he doesn't have anything to directly deal with those bowmen, except Taxodis of his own. And Zerd is now pushing in to Eri's base. He is smelling blood in the water and he wants to make his move and go for the throat. With the commanding lead of 11 villagers, 69 to the 58, and a huge military lead as well. But Eri is still holding on into his base. 
Also, bar raid on the berry. I missed it. Oh yeah, I totally missed that. My bad. I'm getting tired. Another raid here coming in. Oh, but Zern. Wait, what happened here? All right. Wow, even more villagers going down for Eri, but now Zerden trying to m force Eri to move out of his base so he can push in with his main army. And this is looking really rough for Eri right now. He's, he's even catching those villagers on their way to the retreat. 53 villagers to 74. Eri down 11, 21 villagers compared to Zerden. And Zerden is now uh, three quarters of the way up to the Silver Age. Yeah, this is this is not looking good for Eri. He's putting down the stable now, but I don't know if that's going to be enough in time. Eri, I mean Zerden now has reached the Silver Age. Wait, what is this market line? Okay, Zerden has set up a market line here, which amusingly enough only gives him 49 gold per trip. But this is a big engagement, possibly the very last engagement of this tournament. We've got 31 Tuxodis to 33 Bowmen. Oh wow, I take my wards back. I think Eri can hold this actually. His frontline remains strong. That extra pierced armor on the Greek champion Spearman really doing a lot of work here. Now let's see. Eri does have both pierced damage and pierced armor upgrades in H2. And Zerd is researching the melee armor upgrade as his first upgrade in H3. So that's really interesting. And also, I just noticed that this 61 to 76 villager lead that Zerden has, it's not too much because these caravans count as villagers, but they're not bringing in too much gold. Only, only 49 per trip. Oh, and Zerden is going to lose his front line to these spearmen a lot, I think. Faster than Eerie is going to lose his uh, spearmen to Zerden's bowmen, at least. Now Eri's lost his entire front line and there's nothing to protect these Tuxodis from the onslaught of these Asabaras and those bowmen that are just streaming in from Zerden and I think this is the beginning of the end here. Eri losing so many villagers down to 90 population compared to the 173 of Zerden's who is just relentless with his pushes with he has Asabar champion. Bowman champion, Sparabara champion even, he has all of his upgrades and he's getting his uh, armory upgrades as well. Eerie is still desperate for some resources, he's even forced to make an in-base market. And he is still in H2. Wow. Eerie is just losing all of his units here, and despite having a great base layout. I don't think the sheer number advantage of Zerden is going to give him any any lenience in this uh, particular spot. He's down to 70 population and there's the GG. Zerden takes this match and this series and this tournament. 4-2. Let's see. Yeah, Eerie down 15 techs, 10,000 10, fewer resources. Wow. All right. Well, that does it for this series and this tournament. Let's move back to this screen. One second.
All right, we have a winner, guys. So I guess that does it for this stream. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Thank you Servi Momia for the uh, $50 donation. And thanks everybody else who followed. And I believe that does it for me. Thanks for tuning in. And I'll see you guys around next time. <laughs>